So after you have collected some data, the next step you have to do is to organize the data. So how to organize data? So usually we will organize it in a table form. And the software or the tools that we use usually is uh, Excel. So this is Excel that we are familiar. So after you collect uh, quite a lot of data, there's many ways how you can arrange the data in the Excel. So for the data analysis, or for organizing the data for the downstream analysis, it is important to arrange the data in a conventional format, which is not only can be understood by you, but also can be understood by the software. So the data that you arrange in a table should be readable by the computer. So usually we will have a column. So each of these column is what we call a variable. And then we have the row. And then each of these row is what we call the expert unit. So all your data should be arranged in this way. And there should be no cell merging. Okay, there should be no cell that have been merged. Okay, or there's an empty cell and so on and so forth. So this show you one example. So for example, now I have collected the data from 12 lizards. Okay, and then for each of these lizards, I record the species name and some of the characteristics of the each of these lizards. So the way that I arrange the data should be in the table form. So first, as you can see, we have the variable. So we have the group. So this is a species name. We have the specimen ID. We have the measurement of the leg, high leg and four leg. We also record the characteristic of the lizard, whether it's with a few hair or with no hair. And also with the length of the tail and also the width of the head. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven variables. And for each of these variable, we have data. And the data type for each of these variable is different. For example, for the species, we have the nominal data. Specimen, also nominal data. Okay. Length, okay, the measurement of length or the width is the scale data. At the same time, we also have the ordinal data. Okay, they show the different category of the uh, lizard in terms of their the number of hairs on their skin. So it's divided into three categories, and each of these categories can be ranked, for example, from no hair to a few hair to a lot of hair. So for each of these row, we have the experiment unit. So each of the experiment unit is each of these lizard. And for each lizard, we measure different variables. Okay. So as you can see, there's, there is no gap in the data set. Okay. Each of these row is an experiment unit. Okay. In this case, it's a lizard. And then you have a variable in each of these columns. 